right, folks, welcome to the OKD Working Group meeting for February 15th of the year 2022. And take a quick look at the agenda and let me know if there's anything that you want to modify add or add your own items in there. Move one thing around um, that there's uh, right. Um, let's jump right into it with OKD release updates. Vadim. Now, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Um, so some OKD updates as for the releases for nine is proceeding smoothly. We're just rebuilding and fetching the latest changes in uh from Fedora 34. Um, I think a few CVEs have been picked up, which is all kids. And probably one related to the kernel. Pizza definitely should be in, but they don't affect OpenShift um, in, in general. The severity is low. So we're pretty safe on this. Um, for 10 is approaching release candidate state. So we have switched to Fedora 35 there. And we're building it based on the latest uh, Fedora's Fedora stable. Um, in 4.11, we started experimenting with a feature called CoreOS layering. That's um, an improvement in our RPM OS 3, which allows us to use an existing container already contained in Fedora CoreOS, layer our RPMs on top, and proceed with the release. Um, that would help us spin to exact Fedora CoreOS releases without rebuilding and distribute all of our updates in. Um, um, in the images. Um, there is an enhancement for the OpenShift to extend this so that folks would be able to add their own custom configuration on every upgrade on top. And using build config, this container would be rebuilt. So that would help us bringing uh, things like drivers on every single upgrade more easily and have a better controlled um, way of distributing one single image into the multiple. Uh, we're so far using this in 4.11 master, not yet merged, but once we'll have it, we'll probably uh, update for 10, um, if that he didn't say. Uh, the most interesting thing happened also in uh, the installer. Notably, we have adjusted the existing tech preview assistant installer to make it work with OKD. For those who don't know, um, assistant installer is a web service which allows you to basically install a cluster using a classic wizard style. It generates a so-called discovery ISO. So once you boot from it, uh, the machine would be registered as a service and you would be able to tweak its host name to see uh, network settings uh, to see how the disks are being laid out and prepare for the insula installation that's happened. It also ensures that the machine has valid um, DNS records, all things necessary before the install, so you are able to uh, fix them. With, with IPXE, you are also would be able to boot this on the machines which don't have access to virtual media, like AWS, for instance. Um, it also uses bootstrap in place mechanisms, so you don't need uh, an additional machine for bootstrap. One of the masters would be used as a bootstrap seamlessly 
and it also works with uh, single node Um Yeah, that's pretty much all I have from the release point. Any questions for Vadim on anything that he was talking about there? All right, thank you for all your work, Vadim. Up next is Docs Updates. Brian. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we had our meeting last week. A um, number of things come out of it. I think the first one is that the code of conduct and the deadline for comments is today. So there is a discussion item there. So if you haven't gone and read it and had a look at it and you want a chance to comment, um, the clock is ticking. Um, so you want to come in, Diane? I was just going to say one of the, the outstanding questions on it that I'm trying to get resolved is um, the email to whom the um, any, any questions um, or issues are addressed. And um, at this point, legal has not given, uh, I've put a couple of requests into them, and they have not given me feedback. So what I was going to suggest is that we just have um, put an alias in the website um, and have it come to me. And I will um, uh, and and I will address it um, with the the chair, the, whoever the current chairs are of the um, of the working group, and um, and bring it to uh, legal. I I don't think there's an issue with that at all. I'm just trying to get them to give me something in writing saying that's the correct thing to do. So rather than setting up an email server for OKD.io, we just in the web link call it that so we can we can work that out um that way but they they didn't have any objection but they also had no response to so um that's never a good thing <laughs> but i think we need, just need to move if there are no objections in the next just in the next iteration um close it and um and make it happen okay that sounds good um on a similar note um we're, we're doing some work to actually tidy up the existing GitHub repositories to actually get ready to move. We are setting up an OKD organization on GitHub where everything's going to be located. So we're going to move out of the OpenShift. That will allow greater community um, um, involvement in those Git repos because there are some Red Hat restrictions where we are at the minute, so I'll just make our life easier. So we are doing some cleanup. So one of the items that we discussed was the community repo. There is a community repo in the OpenShift um, org with five markdown documents in it. So we're gonna roll them into the okd.io. So they'll come into the community documentation site and they'll be surfaced, the content of the documents will be surfaced on that site. Also, we're looking at the content of the main OpenShift repo. So that's where we do all our discussion and issues and reporting, but it currently has some documentation in there as well. So the idea is that we're gonna go through that. We're going to pull out what documentation we want to preserve. And the decision has been that the official product docs are on docs.okd.io, um, that is, um, run by Red Hat. It's a version of the official um, OpenShift OCP documentation customized for OKD. And then we've got the community documentation site, which is okd.io. And that's where all documents should live, technical and non-technical. So that would be the single source that we send everybody to. So that said that we want to move the documentation out of the main um, OKD repo. Um, and that sparked a conversation, which I don't think we actually got to a conclusion is, what technical document do, documentation do we need? How deep should it be? What should it enable the community to do? So that is a conversation that's ongoing. Um, to start with, we're, we're doing some research. So before we actually start bugging some of the Red Hatters and asking for their time, we're gonna do some research and what's in the repositories and what can we figure out um, should we allow somebody to actually pick up and be able to do a custom build of OKD purely on the technical docs? Should we allow them to go and create things like um, 
customize the operators that are installed or maybe customize the operator catalogs that are installed. So all these sort of conversations are happening. Um, as I say, we haven't yet come to a resolution. So if you want to chip in on that conversation, um, either come to the docs group um, or put comments in the discussion in the OKD repo and um, we'll be moving that on. Um, we also look, talked about the operator, but I see that is on the agenda. So I'm gonna leave that one for the later item. And today, Daniel created some issues to actually kick off the um, initiative to start the, the guides for 4.9. Um, so I think we'll pick that up at the next docs group. <clears throat> um, I also noticed there's a discussion item being added to the, the, today's agenda. Um, I think we need a little bit of coordination just so there's some commonality across the guides and there's a similar structure and they don't look like they've been written by six independent people with totally different ideas of what, what should be in the guide. So we'll coordinate that. Um, we now have access to the Twitter account, but I don't think we've decided what to do with it yet. Um, I think Jamie and Diane have the ability to, to tweet on yep. our behalf but we haven't really decided what we want to do with that. And um, so, I'm just looking through the agenda. Sorry. I, I just have a, a quick question since we have Vadim here and I haven't seen his face. Um, one of the things that I, I have done a couple of tweets and I did a tweet on a release um, and I was thinking to add into the release process, a very standard template to, um, and if I give you privileges to the Twitter account, if you can just grab basically what you put in the email, a slight variation on that, um, and just tweet that out each time you do a stable release. Um, if you don't have the bandwidth to do that, I'm happy to do that myself, but um, I thought that might be um, an easy easy thing to do. Um, and um, the other thing is on social media, I am now told there needs to be three people who have um, access to the keys to the kingdom um, for security That's reasons. Not true, I passed the quiz today and you have to have just two. Yeah, but yeah, yeah um, uh, using it for release notifications is, that would be useful, mostly yeah. to get uh, some yeah. notifications from, from the community because the mailing list is mostly failed. So I think Twitter would be a good idea. Yeah, so if I, if we are the two Red Hatters and I also give it to Jamie, um, then I think we are, we're covered um, by for our social media standards. Yeah, I took that quiz too. Um, and, but prior to that quiz, I got reprimanded for not using Bitwarden. Um, so uh, we will do that and um, it's all fun. And I'm not sure, Jamie, I can give Bitwarden to you. So there's that whole thing. So anyways, um, Vadim, we'll get you on it. You will be my second. And then, and Jamie, we will figure out how to get you access. So if those three, and then Ryan, you're kind of the acting head of docs right now. So if I can figure out how to get external people into Bitwarden, I may ask for an exemption from Bitwarden because this is an external thing. Um, I, I, I would think that the, the people who are basically chairing the different roles um, are the ones and then the um, over the virtualization folks and if the micro shift people come in get them into the cadence of that too so but I, I really do think each of the releases as you do it and I I wake up and I see your note and then I forget to log in so I think it's better if you did it um, so Vadim you're able to do that I, I just want confirmation that you, you want to do that yourself yeah certainly okay excellent Cool. Just want to be sure because, you know, it, it was pointed out by other people in the community like, hey, you've got, you know, these releases coming out and no one's promoting them. We definitely want. Yeah. Sure. And, and we can almost automate it, too, yeah. if we could figure this out right. So when you post it, we could probably strip it. But that's another stage. So there now, you go. It, is it too much to do blog posts for it, do you think, Brian? What's your thought? Um. Given the number of releases that we have, I mean, I think the Twitter for me would be the most useful just to know that it's there. I mean, obviously, if you are using OKD regularly, you're going to get the notification through the the update manager that there's an update available. And um, I think having a Twitter was a, a tweet. Um, I, I think 
a blog post if there's anything that needs to How be explained or anything. Releases? Yeah, if there's any new features or if there's any gotchas or if there's a um, beware of this, if, if you take this one, you may have to go and twiddle something manually because right. there's some change. I think things like that warrant a blog, but just for a uh, an incremental release, a, a tweet, linking in maybe the release notes for that release is probably good. Um, we we should do a blog um, if there's any sort of gotchas or any anything we want to specifically point out on a new feature or new capability that we want to add. Excellent. Okay, and there's one more thing on the docs, and that is that we now have a presentation template. Um, in the chat, I actually did post the link to it. So if you're ever speaking anywhere and you want an OKD template for a presentation, it lives in Google Docs. Um, the link is also in the HackMD for the Docs um, Docs meeting, the agenda meeting there. Um, I'm not sure whether we have any way. I, I'll also add it into the, if we think it's a good idea, add it into the documentation, or is that something you want to keep just for this community? Or should we make it more generally available for people? We can we can take that in the docs meeting next week. Time to make that decision, and that's it. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Second here. Okay, great. Uh, any questions for Brian in regards to documentation stuff? Okay, we never actually did. Uh, sorry. We never actually did resolve are we going to change the name. <laughs> and that, 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 that was the other thing that we talked about, changing the name from the docs to community or communication. Yeah, or... We, we haven't really tackled that one. Does anyone in this group have a sense of um, if docs, working group, subgroup, still captures what it is that that group does? Or should we, you know, I've weighed in, Diane's weighed in, Brian has weighed in a little bit, but anyone else here in the general group have a thought about should that, subgroup have a different name since it does more than documentation or is that does everything it does fall under documentation communications twitter communication seems to me a little um smaller than our mandate like it's a sub part of documentation but that's just me so that's and on the other hand when i hear dogs group i'm thinking dogs.okdio and nothing else so we would need a very encompassing word which includes all the things you guys do. I'm at a loss to come up with a better word. So, anyone else have any thoughts? Mindshare? Minecraft. We could do Minecraft. <laughs> Devrel? Is that Devrel? close enough? Yeah, that's probably close enough to what is actually happening here. I don't particularly object to documentation also including we, announcements and blog posts and things, but I, I understand how that's confusing. I like I like DevRel actually. I was thinking something like outreach, but that's probably Well that's where I got the idea of Mindshare, because that's typically where that that typically comes from. But like I like DevRel. All right. Well put your put your suggestions in the meeting notes and then we'll take them back to the docs or currently docs subgroup and talk about them some more. Hey, uh, let's see. Next up are the platform guides. Take it away. Um, okay, so Brian brought up a, um, a really good point when I filed issues against people um, who, who, would, who had interest in writing guides. Um, I think we need to spend a little bit of time figuring out what these guides should be so that, like, they shouldn't be a copy paste of the standard install docs, right? There's, there's not any value in having a copy of those. Um, so, my conception was as simple as it's more of a story of here's the decisions I made when I did this particular install on this particular platform, but 
if we want to talk about it more, should we do that here? Should we do that in the in the um, in the docs meeting? Uh, what, what do people want to do? Um, well, I think we're missing two of the contributors to, in this meeting, so we probably need to arrange a time when the contributors have volunteered are all going to show up somewhere. Gotcha. Okay. Either that, or we do it offline as a discussion forum and let people contribute within a discussion topic on the repo. Okay. That that can't get it face to face. Do it asynchronously. Let's try doing it asynchronously. See what happens. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, I like the idea of trying it async and, and seeing what happens. Um, okay, then I'll start a topic in the in the discussion group and um, and we can come to a consensus on what those guides should be. Um, the I guess I'll close those issues for now since I'm not sure it's worth having issues for work that we haven't decided what the shape of the work should be. Um, the other question is, are we close enough to 4.10 that these we should be preparing guides for 4.10 rather than 4.9 at this point? Vadim, what is your sense of timeline? I really hope that we won't have to rewrite any guides for 4.10. We literally have zero changes, notable changes between there. We would have bare metal IPI since 4.10. That requires quite some hardware. Um, I don't think Charo's nukes can boot from IP mine things, so we probably won't be able to ask him to, to reproduce them. In any case, that requires a totally separate guide. We won't have to update them. Uh, yeah, from what I've seen, quite a lot of folks are still using Charo's guide, uh, wait, uh, still using guide from OPD for the five times, and they are apparently successful. Um, we are close, just, like about a month, but we definitely won't have to revive guides for for the tents. When okay. will the day? When would you think the dailies will be stable that we can test that? They, they are stable. I mean, we can really use any time. The problem is upgrade jobs are failing. Uh, that's an OVM bug that would manifest itself as a API breakdown. We can work this around any day and we go with the stable. Okay, so so maybe as we write the guides, we test them on the 410 daily just to just to double check. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. And and good call out there, Brian. All right, I think we're ready now for our Fedora Core OS updates. Is that right? Okay, take it away. All right, can you hear me correctly? Okay, great. Uh, okay, for Fedora Core OS, it's rather calm those weeks. Um, um, but we've started working and looking at the changes for Fedora 36. So Fedora 36 is coming later. The beta is coming something like in two or three months. One month, I don't have the timeline at hand, but it's uh, as always we, we start looking before the, the release happens, we before the beta, we start looking at the changes. So I've added the links into the, the hacking D for the tracker we've made for all the Fedora 6 changes. And uh, I don't think we have any changes really impacting OKD. Um, they will be. Um, some G DNS uh, over data support added to system D resolve D. Hopefully that won't impact MK OKG, but that to just be tested to make sure. And uh, yes, apart from that, uh, there aren't any big other changes. Um, yes, there's, there's also, there is still one one other change that will be coming with Fedora 36 is that the move from Podman 3 to Podman 4, V3 and V4, uh, but as OKD only uh, uses that for bootstrap. I think that should be uh, also mostly fine, uh, as uh, the, all the all of the containers run and with Cryo. Um, 
on the federal, more federal credit side of things, uh, so we finally trying to move away from IP tables legacy backend to the new NFT based backend, and that should happen sometime uh, shortly. I don't remember if we have scheduled it for the same time as the federal statistics release, but that should be uh, close or, or happening soon. I don't think that either will create any issue for KG, but. Uh, just bring me that. And uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the main items right now. The one for, for the for the IP tables change, uh, it might impact um, uh, third party operators. So um, someone from the Typhoon distribution said that Cilium, for example, needs some special configuration. Uh, so uh, folks that are running uh, things like that should take a look at the at the documentation for CBM to make sure that they match um, the type of uh, AP tables backend that we're using. I'll try and and link the exact comment. Excellent. Any uh, questions or uh, comments uh, on the Fedora Core OS updates? Thank you so much. Uh, let's move on now to uh, the rest of our current items list. So shut down the dev Slack. So we've all agreed to do this. Diane, what do we need to do? Who do we... I just need to go in and kill it. Um, okay. and that, that's it. If everybody's on board with that, the DM seems to be on board with that, we'll just go kill it today. So um, today is the official end date of that channel and I will go in and Retire it. Archive it, I think, right? Yeah. Archive it, yeah. Retire it, archive, yes. Is the dev Slack a channel within OpenShift Commons, a different Slack workspace? What even is it? This it's is in the in... Kubernetes Slack. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're, there's like three Slacks involved here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to retire it. It's had a message in it for, for a week or so. Wow. And, um, We'll just archive it. Very cool. All right. Next up is um, da, 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 is uh, should we create a Google group for announcements? The docs team was sort of talking about this, and the general sense was no, we can put announcements in like Twitter or other places. But do we want to? The flip side of that is, do we want to encourage? Um, people to look for announcements in the working group because some things get sent to the working group like so Vadim posts updates in the working group and some folks have said well you can go look at the working group for this update on OKD and stuff like that. I think if we're going to say that I think it might be helpful if we just dis not discourage but we avoid directing non-working group people to the working group list lest people start asking user questions again. As a matter of fact, I think we got one uh, this morning that was a user question in the working group. In other words, it would be nice to keep the working group Google group just for working group business, I think. Any thoughts on that? Yes, no, maybe so. I think it's a good idea. I found that GitHub discussions are very useful thing to, to help users, and they're terrible at coordinating the work group efforts. So um, I like this idea. I think it's fine as a as a mechanism that we that we can offer user assistance and whatever because um, aside from it being asynchronous, it's also directly linkable. And like one of the problems I've had with I all right, I actually say the biggest problem I have with uh, with people asking for support in in the Kubernetes Slack is that it's invite only and on top of that not indexed anywhere so the knowledge just kind of floats away into the ether like the 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 new okd matrix room if people want real-time chat all the messages are there we can always export it and turn it into documentation whatever the heck we want um when it comes to the stuff that's on github discussions it is always there forever and we can just again incorporate that into documentation or links or references it'll be googleable same goes for the mailing list, but like it seems like the mailing list isn't terribly helpful for for people. So 
I'm I'm okay with with Vadim's idea here. Right. Any other thoughts? So is that um, we're going to move to Matrix? Is that what? Sorry, I I got distracted there for a minute. Well, I I think we're going to see how it goes, right? Okay. To see. We haven't even started promoting it yet. So, like, yeah. so I think we have to see like you know, how people deal with it. I do like the idea of technical discussions being in the discussion section of the repo because then people can look right at it and follow it and, and you know, solutions can be listed as solutions and stuff like that. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, okay, so next up is security liaison posting. I didn't know what else to call it. This is the thing that I've been working on. Um, I did it a long time ago, but just didn't dig it out until recently because now we have Twitter. Um, basically, the, we talked about this in the docs group um, and in the main group a little bit. The idea is that we need someone to like post about security stuff, at least so that we have some security posture that's visible so that people know that we're thinking about it, as opposed to just being like, oh yeah, we have you know, Red Hats talking about this. Um, so here's what I came up with. Um, Docs group didn't really have any much feedback on it. The idea is that we'll put this on the blog and then Twitter it out and see if we can get a volunteer and also put something in the working group, um, post it there. So if we can get someone to volunteer to do security stuff, like just track down, you know, current bugs and stuff like that, um, current vulnerabilities, things that are security oriented, and then just be able to com like formulate a response in terms of OKDs so that people know that we're actually like, we, we're cognizant of the fact that these are on the radar. One of the reasons is because we get a lot of questions in the chat in particular about, does this impact OKD? Are you aware of this, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it'd be nice for us to have a concise response to yes, yeah, along the lines of, concise response along the lines of, yes, we're aware of this, um, it's on our list, or no, it's not on our list, we will add it to our list or something. Does anyone have any feedback or thoughts on this? Should we just go ahead and post it uh, and send it out? Any comments on the language? Yep. Go ahead, Diane. No, I'm good with it. I'm fine. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. All right, we'll put it out. We'll see if we can get a volunteer. Um, if there's anyone in this group that wants to volunteer to do that, um, just let us know. Um, I mean, it doesn't involve a lot of time, just combing through, you know, um, OpenShift security vulnerabilities and maybe FCOS security vulnerabilities um, and just sort of putting it all together and in one little place uh, and sort of being up to date. Timothy, uh, how, can I just ask Timothy how they do it for FCOS? Um, do you do any any um, security vulnerability postings for the FCOS project? Oops, you're on mute. Sorry. There you go. You're unmuted now. Oh no, it's it's unmuted here, but we still can't hear you. Okay, is it better now? Yep. Yeah, there we go. It's better now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, we don't have our our, our own like posting or release notes yet on this front, so we essentially rely on the federal ones, um, because there are, there are already some federal security advisory or something. Uh, I don't remember the details. Um, but what we're trying to do is improve at least um, when we do specific release for security vulnerabilities that we mentioned that into the the release notes on the download page. So if you take a look at that here on the, the main page here with the release notes, which are right now mostly about package updates, uh, we're, we're working on trying to add uh, short links to uh, issues we fix into a given release but that won't really that will not really be um, 
full and complete accurate list of all the CVEs that will be fixed in a given release. So to do that, we would need another work with that we another so we have support in the system to display the vulnerabilities, but we would have would need something to post that somewhere, which we don't have already. When we when we do a release, Vadim, is there it has a security thing? Is is there any flagging in the release notes that it's there's a security fix in there? Now the release notes are being created automatically from pull request titles, so. If CV number is mentioned there, which is very unlikely, we will have it. If not, it would be a link to a bug, which we probably could refactor later on and collect which ones are related to security. That's doable. Well, I can see. Thank you, Mohammed, for um, for volunteering. I can see you in the chat volunteering to to take this on. So, um, we'll. We'll we'll see how we can, but, but anytime we can automate something, like if we can grab a metadata tag on in the release and just put a note, uh, I think that's probably step one. But also, yeah, whatever you guys come up with, that would be wonderful, Mohammed. So thanks. Excellent. So it looks like we don't even have to post anything. Mohammed has volunteered. This is great. It's I really appreciate that, uh, particularly over the past like year, lots of people in the group have been stepping forward take little bits and pieces of stuff that's really propelling us forward quite a bit. All right, so moving on to the next just, thing. Just oh. a quick uh, quick, quick note. I think um, if OKD is publishing also the version that are included in the OS content for, for the version of packages, uh, like we do in OCP, um, you can probably make a script which will like pull a given release of uh, OKD, list all the packages, look at the federal database of all the CVEs for which versions, and then correlate the two, and then post that somewhere. So you don't need to spawn up a full cluster and things like that to do just that. Yeah, that's good. Excellent. All right, we will add that to the to the. Um, the pipeline of things uh, to do to assemble the security release. Thank you. Um, moving now to operators. Uh, so it was discussed at the docs meeting that the place to have the continued discussion on operators is that same ticket that Christian opened. Um, so we now have the names of folks to bug. Uh, so we're gonna um, start those conversations and put are um, the results of those conversations in that same ticket in terms of trying to first finding out the viability of getting an OKD specific catalog. Um, and then um, from that discussion, depending on how that goes, the idea of getting some of these um, community operators, some of these things released as true community operators. Um, and we've all reached out to various operator point people uh, and so let's start putting all of that info in one place so that we can track it and see who's talking to who and what the responses were uh, on these. Any comments or questions on the operator sort of sub-project? And again, this is to provide operators that are OKD specific uh, and um, ideally get some of the Red Hat operators that should be community operators, we think, um, available as true community operators and possibly an OKD catalog in and of itself. So. Cool. Uh, let's see. And then we're up to tasks. Can we get 410, 411 update info? I don't know if anyone noticed, but there is, I think, scheduled for Thursday, a video presentation from Red Hat uh, on 410. It, uh, it's tomorrow at 10 Eastern, I think. Oh, tomorrow. Okay, 10 Eastern. All right, so this is the you know usual um, like three hour <laughs> video presentation on all of the things that are coming, and um, so I'll be gathering stuff from that, and I'll be gathering stuff from docs, and um, we'll like basically assemble a list so that you know as we talked about before, um, thanks for the, the idea is to get ahead of the ball on a release so that we can be like okay D four ten coming soon with all these great, awesome features. 
you know, got to hype it, right? Um, and uh, let's see what else. Charo is not here. We don't need something. Uh, Charo is not here. I can touch base with him. Uh, micro shift invite. Um, has anyone uh, approached the micro shift folks about uh, inviting them to the meeting? I, I will reach out to them um, for the next meeting to see if we can get them on the agenda. Excellent. If no one else was, unless Vadim, you have a close contact there. Yes, I could. I could ask them to join. Sure. Yeah. Vadim, I'll put your name next to that item. Okay. Uh, clean up OKD repo of old guides. That's you, Brian. Yeah, I've sort of, I've sort of combined this one with the the work that we're doing to consolidate and clean out the repos ready for the new org. Right, and and that's actually the next item. So um, Brian and I talked with Vadim, and um, Vadim is suggesting that we put in PRs for changes to the current OKD repo. Because there's who else did you want Vadim to take a look at that to those changes? There was someone else. Christian, wasn't it? Uh, was it Christian? No, it was. Um, who else was it, Vadim, that you wanted to take a look at the any proposed changes to the OKD repo before we like clean up? It was Clayton? The of Clayton, that was it. Clayton, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't expect too much attention from Clayton, unfortunately. But yes, um, I could ask. Um, well, I mean, it, yeah. Okay. He's he's the only one that if anybody would pay attention to. I, I've asked Chris Alfonso in the past as well, <coughs> Vadim, and and he's he's pushed. I yeah. I think we want Clayton or somebody high ranking just from an overall view to give us an impression. First of all, what we're missing. We know we are missing Azure, for instance, and they would be interested in that. But to cover some use cases which we don't have guides for. And maybe some guides are just, um, first of all, need to be created. Second, just insufficient quality. And maybe we should just drop down and, and ask some dogs folks instead. So we want Clayton, somebody high ranking from the very, very high level. Um, I could I could try finding someone, sure. Um, Chris, do you have a Okay, and we can put PRs against the repo for folks to look at for things we want. Uh, let's see, place GitHub usernames for guides. Okay, we got that one. That's, I think, done, basically. But for the guides, cross that one out. That's it. That's all of our to-dos. Any last minute items? Anything else folks want to talk about before we? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, my name is Lev. Vadim invited me to this meeting as a guest. I discussed today, um, following his excellent work on adding uh, the OKD support for uh, assistant installer. And um, he proposed to basically discuss it in this forum. Because right now on uh, the downstream, on OpenShift, there is a console, openshift.com, which actually allows to use uh, the assistant installer, actually without any effort on the user side. And uh, my suggestion on, you know, question if, uh, if it will be possible to actually have the same system for OKD, because I think it will greatly uh, simplify it for uh, anyone who will want to try the OKD, because he will not need to create his own assisted installer infrastructure, basically, to run it himself, but he will be able, for example, to go, I don't know, to uh, console.okd.io and have a, this familiar interface and, you know, just um, type in the data into the UI and get his system installed. My understanding is that all of that infrastructure is tied into Red Hat SSO. So that would be tricky. No, not necessarily. As in, we can have different authentication methods, but if, first of all, 
the question it brings, how do we authenticate? Uh, we probably could pick GitHub or Google, but still there are a lot of questions around this idea. So if we would host our own assistant installer service, we would also have to be responsible for user data. And it's not just domain names, we collect agents are sending quite a lot of important information like network uh, data. We could have probably a TOS that people would accept. And then assistant seller would require all hosts to be connected so that the agents could connect to our instance. Meaning this connected install would be very, very complicated. And this is where a question begs, why would we want to have this instance if there is already an OpenShift uh, provided one, and it has the same features, and it already gives you the very same OCP, not OTD, but people, most of them care. What they want is a disconnected cluster so that they wouldn't have to report to Red Hat or anybody associated around that. Um, it's a very interesting problem to solve, really, but um, user data handling and maintenance and authentication are serious problems which we just don't want to jump in onto those. Um, we could find infra, we could hide, find hosting, we could host it at the door and things, but these are the questions we need to have answered before we start approaching. Uh, so far, um, you can host assistant installer on anything which can run Podman. You would need maybe two or three gigabytes to store a discovery ISO and some uh, database. So it's not, it requires you to have some info, but it's not a crazy requirement. Um, you can also host it on some other cluster, and that's one of the ways we would be uh, approaching is have a bootstrap assistant installer type of cluster, which very simplified, probably microchip based or something like that. And that one service is used to spin up actual uh, OCP clusters. Um, so we are aiming towards slimming down the requirements instead of having a centralized OKD specific. Uh, but if Anybody wants to solve these problems or at least start discussing them, we are very open to uh, It's just we're not yet ready to start hosting our own um, OPD provided service. So, so would this service work um, in an anonymous way? If we just want to use it as an installer where I fill in a form and it then ships me back the ISO or whatever I need, and then forgets everything I ever told you, would that model work? Because I'm, I'm guessing within the OCP, you then link it into your central management console, so you do want to capture all that information. But for an OKD, for an open source user, as a mechanism of just providing an easy install where nothing is then stalled or, or maintained, it's a fire and forget function where you just get effectively the install and then none of the data is actually store anywhere it's just forgotten once that transaction's finished is would that model work in this case or is there more complexity where you need to actually keep that data around and i want to say actually hold on one second i do want to say that mohammed said the exact same thing in the chat mohammed did you have anything you wanted to add to that so mohammed said uh, what if it was a simple installer ui for local installation no sso or just a web ui an engine for kind of gui installation mohammed did you have anything else you wanted to add what you typed? Um, it's just like kind of a, a web application. You can actually think of it as a simple Docker image uh, for installing an OpenShift and uh, or connecting to the vSphere engine or API for just scheduling things up and got it running. Yeah, that's that basically awesome. the state of that. That's exactly basically the state of assistant installer now. If you deploy it locally, it has no authentication or nothing. But if somebody creates a cluster, meanwhile, you would still be able to see all the details. And before the host 
between the moment that the host is so the cluster is created, the hosts are being discovered, registered, everybody can see each other, hosts and see all the information, like network details, uh, disk details, things like that. Um, because of the nature of Bootstrap in place, installer, assistant installer has to be running during the installation, during the Bootstrap phase at least. Um, so you are, for at least an hour, you are quite exposed publicly. Uh, it can be solved by authentication, and assistant installer has some uh, authentication, but nevertheless, uh, storing this data, passing it around, and having it a connected installation are very, very, let's say, um, um, they are as far as possible from what OPD wants to, to actually. We want to give people their own disconnected environment. They want we want to give them uh, options not to report to an address. And if we would host the centralized service, that would be the exact opposite of it. Um, so I think we should start. We should keep this idea in the backlog and attempt to fix it on both ends. First, try to resolve the data storage issue, which is probably the largest one. And meanwhile, we would be working on slimming down this installer so that almost anybody could run it on the camera. That would, host, that would fix quite a lot of issues from, um, from our potential users. I mean, I could see like slapping a an interface on um, my vSphere UPI work that I did um, that automates UPI, vSphere UPI, and I'd imagine other folks have similar things. So we could do something local. Lev, do you want to, we're running on low on time. Lev, did you want to open a discussion item in our repo? And then that way folks can chime in on this and we can have this as an ongoing discussion and see what we can come up with. I'm not sure how I do this <laughs> on your environment. No, I'll give you the link right now, and then um, just go ahead and post a discussion item explaining um, what your thoughts are and what you'd like to see. And here, I'll put it in the chat right now. Um, that's the discussion section for, um, uh, for the project. So just go ahead there, open up a, a discussion item, and then folks will chime in with their ideas, and we'll see if we can... Um, make something out of this. Uh, you know, it's longer term. This is a mid to long term uh, request, I think, as opposed to short term, but at least we can start some discussion on it. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you for attending the meeting and thank you for participating. Um, anything else? All right. Well, thanks so much, folks. Um, have yourselves a great rest of your week and um, uh, Docs working group meeting, same bad time, same bad channel next week. And then we'll meet back here two weeks for the main group meeting. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.